this around these parts. Back then, they could say a whole lot more than ba ba, mo mo, and stuff like that. They could talk just like human folks. Back then, there were these humongous grandparent pigs. They built themselves a house out of rock in a pretty green hollow of a black mountain way. As soon as they finished, they moved into their fine rock house with their three piglets. The oldest piglet, Ruder, was a fair-sized show. The middle piglet, Lanky, was a real grandma's boy. And the baby piglet was a tiny little girl runt named Ham. <laughs> Now, Ruder and Oinky and Hamlet had the finest pig holler in the pi, finest pig house in the holler. They even had a wallowing hole right in front of the yard. But all Ruder and Oinky wanted to do was eat, eat, and eat. <laughs> Baby Hamlet liked to eat too, but not all the time. Hamlet liked to roll around in the delicious mud in the wallowing hole and look up at the pretty blue sky. She was a right smart piglet with more on her mind than eating. It wasn't long before Ruder and Anki got so fat that they just about they just about filled up the whole house. What a squeeze it was to fit everybody in. Finally, it got so <laughs> tight that Grandpa Pig spoke to Ruder. Ruder, you're the oldest. Time's come for you to go out and set, seek your fortune. Oh no, Ruder squealed, I'm still a little piglet. Look in that mud hole, said Grandpa Pig. What do you see? Ruder looked in the muddy water. I see a great big fat pig, he said. That big fat pig is you, Ruder. Time's come to go out and seek your fortune. <laughs> well, Ruder hemmed and hawed and had an extra big helping of Grandma's baked beans to settle his nerves. Blakey had some too, just to keep Ruder company. Meanwhile, Grandma Pig gathered up some whole cake and turnip. Along with some dried beans and corn, she packed them in a big toe sack for Ruder to take along. Now, son, said Grandma Pig, you'll be fine if you remember three things. That's a lot to remember, said Ruder. Stop chewing and listen carefully, said Grandma Pig. Ruder, go. I'm listening. One. You gotta watch out for that mean trick you'll drew in my box. Two. Build yourself a safe, strong house at a rocks. Three. Come on and visit your grandparents every single Sunday. Grandma and Uncle Baby Hamlet kissed Ruder on his fat, round jaw. And for good luck, they kissed him again on his pink, trembly snout. <coughs> Walk and he walked. And what did all that walking do? It made him mighty hungry. He didn't think about any mean, tricky old Julie Mouth Fox. He didn't think about any safe, strong rock house. He didn't think about visiting his grandparents come Sunday. All he could think about was the food his grandma put in the toe sack. So he set himself down on a rock and opened up the sack. Whole cakes, he squealed and started gobbling them up. Ruder felt a tap on his shoulder. He didn't look around, and he didn't miss a chew. Just said between bites, don't bother me, I'm busy eating. But the tapping went on. Ruder swallowed a big chunk of whole cake and looked around. There was a mean, trivial old Julie Mouth Fox grinning at him. Have some whole cakes, said Ruder, real scared. Don't like whole cakes, said the fox. Well, how about some turnips or corn, said Ruder. Don't like the none of them either, said the fox. Well, what can I offer you, asked Ruder. I love barbecued pig, cried the fox, and he grabbed the toe sack and stuffed Ruder into it. Please don't eat me, Ruder pleaded. I won't eat you right now, said the meat tricky old drooling off fox. I'm going to stay for a cold winter's day. Nothing like hot barbecue on a cold winter's day. <laughs> Locked him up. Sunday rolled around. All day, Grandpa and Grandma Pig and Baby Hamlet looked for Ruder to come visiting. Well, Unky spent the Sabbath eating a double share of rutabagas and corn dumplings, but the night came on without Ruder ever showing up. A month of Sunday passed, and they didn't see a snout or tail of Ruder. Meanwhile, Oinky was growing so big the house was getting crowded again. They were having a hard time fitting in. Finally, Grandma Pig spoke, said, Oinky, it's time you set out to seek your fortune. 
No, Grandma Inky Spill. I'm too little to leave my grandma. Look in that mud hole and tell me what you see, said Grandma Pig. Inky looked in the muddy water and saw how huge he had grown. He knew he was grandma. He knew his grandma was right. Inky didn't say a word, but two big tears rolled down his plump jaws. Grandma Pig said, no need for tears, Inky. All you have to do is remember three things. One, watch out for the mean, tricky old drooly mouth fox. Two, prove yourself a safe, strong house and a mouse. Three, come home to see your grandparents every single summer. Grandma packed Inky a toast sack full of his favorite food, rutabagas and corn dumplings. Then Baby Hamlet and Grandma Pig kissed Inky on his fat round jaws, and for good luck, they kissed him again on his pink chumbly snout. With a crusty golden corn dumpling, when he felt a tap on his shoulder, he whirled around so fast he dropped the dumpling. There was a mean, tricky old drilling mouth fat and grinning at him. Would you like some dumplings, stammered Inky, really scared to death? Never eat them, said the fox. How about some rutabaga, said Inky. Can't stand the smell of them, said the fox. Well, what do you like, said Inky. Pork with lima beans, said the fox. And he snatched up the toe sack and stuffed poor Inky inside. Hamlet skipped on down the road till she, till she found a place with a fine bunch of rocks. She made herself a safe little rock house with a nice <coughs> fireplace to keep warm by. No sooner had Hamlet settled in than that mean, tricky old, really mouth clock came knocking at her door. Please let me in, little pig, she begged. I'm near freezing to death. Not on the fuzz of your bushy tail will I let you in, said Hamlet. Please have mercy on a poor old fox. My nose is about frozen off. Just open the door crack and let me warm my nose, she pleaded. Hamlet cracked the door of mice. The fox shoved his nose inside the crack. Slam! Hamlet banged the door shut. The fox got his nose was ready to get, was, was, was really to drop off of herself. But he was thinking what nice pork chops Hamlet was back. Be quiet, said Hamlet. You're making so much racket, I can't hear what's going on outside. The fox lowered his voice to a moan. Please, my tail, my tail. Just what I thought I heard, said Hamlet. Dogs barking. Dogs? What kind of dogs? asked the fox. Hunting dogs. I'm sure they're fox hunting dogs from the way they bark. Please hide me, cried the fox. Don't Same let those hounds catch through the creek and right into the water. Downstream it all floated like an arc, and that was the last meaning of the blue mouth fox was seen around the house. <laughs> Baby Hamlet hurried down to Rattlesnake Holler and searched all around till she found the fox dead with her brother Peter and Oinky. Back at Grandma's house? Mm -hmm. We're coming back to Grandma's house. <laughs> it just happened to be on a Sunday when she found them and set them free. So they all trotted right over to Grandma and Grandpa Cake's house. And there was snorting and eating and cooking and eating and swallowing and mining. And more eating for lunch, which you'll never see. <laughs>